a video I didn't want to make. It's one I've put off doing for months. Feels a little like failure. It's unfinished business. This is the story of my tour interrupted. So why record it now? Why kind of dwell on what went wrong? I think it's because it's quite the story. It's almost as though the tour was conspiring to stop me riding it. I'm far more of a mountain bike here. And I originally planned to ride in 2018, but a change in jobs meant it wasn't really going to work out. So I moved it to the 2020 edition. Even this had a bit of a challenge in so much as I registered, had everything jacked up with work, and my boss decided to hold a meeting that I had to be at right when I was going to be starting. Thankfully, there's waves of 100 that leave and I was able to switch my start date to the end of this year's tour and fit the work trip in. After we'd finalised the plan and got over 28 days, booked the flights home, arranged the pickup, all those details, my brother told me his wedding date. I knew he was getting married, he knew I was doing the tour. So when he told me the date of his wedding, it didn't let on that it cut into my tour and I'd have to do some rescheduling. I didn't really need to let it stop me doing the tour and I just acknowledged internally that perhaps I'd have to bail early in that South Island to make it home for his wedding. It was just a question of what it was going to do to the logistics of riding the tour. Looking at the plan, I left the North Island unchanged. 14 days left a lot of space and there were a few spots where conceivably we'd make up time. It was the South Island that rejigged and brought that down to a 13 day plan where again there was some scope that we might be able to get it done in 12. Getting to the start was a bit of a challenge logistically with a couple of flights and buses or shuttles or private transport. When I landed in Auckland, my flight to Whangarei had been cancelled. All this really did in the end was cut short the time I was going to be spending with my mate Joseph, who was going to drive me from Whangarei up to the start. In hindsight, I guess a more superstitious person would have said, these were all signs you shouldn't have been riding it, but something bad was going to happen. And to be fair, Day one was a bit of a disaster. It wasn't a disaster mechanically or no accident, nothing really untoward. Did manage to get my bottle through my spokes and jammed in my frame in the first half dozen K, but that wasn't a problem. The problem was the wind. mile beaches, 88 kilometers of pretty much a straight line and straight into the wind on the day we started, Friday the 6th of March. All day long it blew on our faces, sand in our shorts and just it's like it was trying to get us to go back to the start. We did well I thought in the end to come up with 12k average but we didn't make it off the beach as we'd planned because the tide came in. We'd lost the race. We were as shattered as we were gutted that on day one we'd come up 20k short. But our spirits were buoyed by Joseph being waiting there as we came off the beach with chocolate milk. He'd also managed to arrange some accommodation with a local who drove us down the road to their parents for a shower that washed away the sunscreen, the sand and the sadness of that 20k. 
didn't know what to think that first night as I went to sleep. I did know we had another 20k on the beach and we couldn't get an early start because you had to wait for the tide. So when we woke up on day two, we had a nice, easy, lazy start before heading down to the beach around 10 a.m. Getting it right, finding the wind was kinda, it was kinda coming in from about a 10 or 11 o'clock for the first 10 kilometers, then swung around behind us and sent us off the beach in style. Of course, we're still 20 kilometers behind where we needed to be and a whole lot of unknowns coming up. Never done anything like that before, nothing so big. But I think that's for the next video.